November 11th and tear my ACL. And I mean, it was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to go through. Never want to see the person that you love the most in the world in that kind of position. In sports, it's a reality that a lot of people deal with. I think you kind of have a decision to make. You have a decision to either go backwards or you can say, what happened? How am I going to move forward from it? For Cup, this was a guy who couldn't lift his leg off the table. We had to teach him how to walk again. We had to teach him how to run again. And, and we also had to teach him how to play football again. Good. Speed, that's it, that's it. I think when you look at his rehab process, you see it correlate the same way on the field. Every little thing he does, he wants to make sure that he does it the right way. So his intangibles are off the charts. He's willing to outwork, outdo, outperform. You know, you wish you had 22 Cooper Cups on the football field. What fuels my hustle is making sure that I'm doing the best that I can for the guys next to me, um, playing for my family, um, playing for my friends. I'm really just looking forward to getting out there and playing football. My name is Cooper Cup, and I play wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. Too slow. Well, we drafted Cooper back in 2017, and from day one, when we had him in the building, we knew he was a, a very special player. But unfortunately, last year, the thing that he loved to do the most was taken away from him. That was an injury that he suffered back on November 11th. They go good, good. Our whole training staff has been unreal, but Byron is the one that's been the most hands-on with, with me. He's doing things now that he was not doing before he was hurt. You'll never outwork him. We always say, what's the difference between a gold medalist and a silver medalist? It's about 1%. Cooper's will to hustle, that's what makes Cup that gold medal type of athlete. Obviously at ACL reconstruction, he's about seven and a half months post-op, so he comes in every day. We pretty much from head to toe are rehabilitating them to get him back ready for play. They joke with me because I'd be the guy that's standing up against the window, like looking outside at everyone running around. Like I was in prison or something. The thing that kept coming back to me day after day was the reminder, don't look so far ahead. You want to move forward, but let's just move forward today. I think the coolest thing of it all, though, really, is he's challenged us a little bit and how we really kind of reinvented a lot of the ACL rehab that we're doing. Him knowing his body and how elite he is and understanding that stuff, we've gotten better just because of him. That's great, that's great work. With the rehabilitation, we want to maximize every day. Nutritionally, every single day, every food that he eats, he literally cannot take any days off because he doesn't want to take a step behind. I walked off the field my senior year with no offers. I was kind of distraught. I remember breaking down in tears, crying on the bus ride home. I didn't know anything else other than putting it all back into football again. And that's what I did heading into college. And playing at Eastern Washington for five years, I just committed all of my time, all of my energy to being the best me that I could be. Some of my grandpa used to talk about all the time, he still talks about it every time we sit down, is the importance of dreaming and visualization. Before a game, he would just lay in his bed with his eyes closed and visualize plays over and over and over again, and then see himself accomplishing his goal. And my expectation was simply that I was gonna get an opportunity to play in the NFL, and whoever ended up choosing me wasn't gonna be disappointed in the player that they got. Through high school and then through college and now through his professional career, I think for me it's been so special to watch the success that he's had, the hard times that he's had, and just his perseverance has been just a really incredible to see. And family is so important to me. That is as a priority before football. My wife has been there through probably the, the highest highs and the lowest lows, and she's always been the, a rock for me. I knew obviously from the day that he got hurt that he was going to come back stronger because of just who he is. Being able to see his joy through that all and watch him through that has been just a really incredible experience. It's fun. Bickering, bantering back and <laughs> forth, arguing who's the better athlete. <laughs> We love having fun together, we love laughing together, and working out is something that I enjoy, and obviously it's a, a big part of his life. Being able to do that together is really special. My best workouts of my life are ones when I'm working out with my wife. Yes, Anna! His family is his biggest part of his life, and it's been nothing but a joy working with both sides. Both of them play off each other. It's very, very fun to see. You can see how much joy they have being with each other. All right. Biggest thing that um, separates Cooper from his peers is the balance that he has. Being able to balance a home life and 
a professional career that's so demanding is really incredible and I don't think a lot of people are able to do that as well and as gracefully as he does. I mean, I think pride is really one of my biggest emotions being able to watch him. You know, I'm just so proud of him and so proud of the work that I see him, you know, go through every single day and his dedication and the sacrifices that he makes. It's just an incredible feeling to watch him do what he loves. I couldn't tell you why it is that I love football from the my early days of my life. I just has just reverberated, I think, through my soul. You know, I take pride in making sure that when I step on the field, it's, I've prepared the best I possibly can. And when I go lay my head down on my pillow at night, I'm gonna be able to say, no one outworked me today.